On the news, 16 killed, 3 injured in Ondo Ore Expressway accident. Nigerian government meets with ASU to avert planned nationwide strike. And Interpol arrests 300 suspected Black Axe members in 21 countries. Thank you for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Simisola Adikun. We start off on a sad note with the death of 16 persons in an accident on the Ondore Expressway on Tuesday. According to the Ondo State Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, three persons were also injured in the accident. Spokesperson of the command, Samuel Ibitoye, in a statement said that the accident involved a Toyota Hayes bus and a truck around the Ajure community. He says the crash was caused by overtaking and excessive speeding, which led to a head-on collision. In a similar development, a head-on collision involving two BRT buses occurred within the designated lane on the lagos Abelkota Expressway at the Yanokaja access, resulting in several wounded passengers on Tuesday. According to the head of the Public Affairs Unit, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Lasema Nosa Okumbo, no lives were lost as a result of the incident. Meanwhile, Minister of Education Tahir Maman has convened the meeting with the uh, meeting with the Academic Staff Union of Universities as on Wednesday, days after university lecturers threatened to down tools over the alleged failure of the federal government to meet its demand. The meeting, which originally was scheduled for Monday but subsequently postponed, is essentially to prevent another nationwide strike in the sector and ensure security is upscaled across the universities. Last week, the university lecturers had threatened to embark on a nationwide strike over what they described as the unwillingness of the federal government to honor the 2009 renegotiated agreement. The demands of ASU include welfare matters, funding for universities, and the need to stop the proliferation of universities across the country. The Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamila, has pledged increased financial support for the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, to enhance its capacity to audit the petroleum and solid mineral sectors of the economy. Bajabi Amela made this commitment on Tuesday during a visit to Nati in Abuja, where he expressed the federal government's satisfaction in the organization's efforts to enhance governance in the extractive sector. Speaking to journalists after an operational tour of the agency, Bajabi Amela described Nati as the backbone of the extractive industry in Nigeria. He further pledged to mobilize both political and social support for Nati's initiatives. On his part, Executive Secretary of NATI said the agency's success in promoting transparency and accountability is largely dependent on the political will and backing of the government. So yes, uh, I think the earlier we get this thing done, the earlier we bring it to the attention of Mr. President, who is very, who, who I mean, is very, very keen on making sure that NFIU and all the sister agencies. Um, succeed um, because his renewed hope agenda uh, has a major component, uh, corruption component in it, and it cannot succeed without um, you, you succeed. So it's a symbiotic relationship between you and the president's agenda uh, that must, uh, that, that, that therefore, this collaboration uh, must, be, must, be, must, be, must be established. This office recommended the Petroleum Industry Act. It's now law passed under your watch. Impactful reforms, such as ongoing unbottling of the NMPC, is in our report, and recovery of revenues to the tune of over $7.2 billion, ensuring Nigeria's natural wealth benefits to government, to companies in terms of profit, and to the society. Now it is also at the forefront of addressing global challenges such as climate change, energy transition and combating illicit financial flows. We also have collaborations with agencies of the federal government, including, including but not limited to the FRS, NCC, NIDA, the Oil and Glass 
uh, gas free zones authority and other revenue and other revenue generating agencies on revenue assurance. One of the key projects we have commenced is the implementation of a monitoring network framework following the recent Supreme Court judgment on the fiscal autonomy of local governments. This should enable the government to ensure that the resources made available have an impact on the citizens. Meanwhile, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, has revealed President Bolatinubu will soon represent the whistleblowing policy to the National Assembly for Legislative Action. Edun, who revealed this on Wednesday in Abuja during a meeting tagged implementing the whistleblowing policy in Nigeria, issues, challenges and the way forward, said the whistleblowing policy is part of the government's strategy to ensure that the nation's public institutions operate with integrity. Edu explained that the federal government expects the support of Nigerians in making the policy work towards enhancing transparency and accountability. The Lagos state government has activated an emergency operation center on MPOX, even though there is currently no active, there are no uh, active cases in the region. The state's commissioner for health, Aki Abayomi, said the Lagos government has enhanced its surveillance and emergency preparedness to counter the threat posed by the aggressive strain of MPOX cleared 1B, which is currently causing on unprecedented surge of cases across Africa. Abayomi added that the state is set to embark on a statewide public health awareness campaign to educate the public on the disease, risks and how to curtail transmission. tv 36s Ogechuko Kukwe completes the report. Following the growing global concern over the spread of the Mpox virus, the Lagos state government says it is on a high alert against the virus, particularly the newly identified clade 1B variant. Health authorities in the city have now unveiled a series of comprehensive public health initiatives to keep the virus in check. We have kicked off our campaign. We are going to activate our emergency operations center to focus specifically on MPOX clade 1B, the strain circulating in Central Africa. And we are going to kick off a public health campaign and start to strategize on treatment options, the issue around vaccines, and setting up a local research team that will start to preemptively understand and inform the government around policy decisions on MPOX. The Commissioner of Health added that the Lagos State is taking proactive steps, drawing on its experience with past health crises like Ebola, COVID-19, cholera, and Lassa fever. According to him, these measures aim to prevent the introduction of the clade 1B variant into Lagos, which could have a severe health and economic implications. There is no specific treatment for it, except uh, supportive therapy with rehydration, pain management, and of course, uh, isolation so that you do not transmit it because it's highly uh, contagious. So if we are able to isolate you either in a hospital or at home and able to give you pain management and good hydration and nutrition, your chances of survival are very high indeed and most people do recover. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control says Lagos has reported only one confirmed case of MPOX out of the 99 suspected cases since the beginning of 2024. The commissioner said the state is exploring vaccines option and has established local research teams to guide government policy on MPOX. It's a new vaccine. Um, it has gone through, uh, there are about three types, but the one that we are mostly talking about is the Nordic uh, Bavarian vaccine, which is a derivative of uh, a s inactivated smallpox virus. It is a well-established uh, technology, uh, although uh, we have not really um, clinically trialed it against this specific uh, strain that we're talking about. But it has shown protection against the other strains of monkeypox through several clinical trials in Europe and in the United States. With high population density, Lagos is particularly vulnerable to the rapid spread of the contagious disease, but health authorities are urging the public and healthcare providers to be vigilant and to be prepared to recognize, diagnose and manage import cases effectively. Ogechukuke with TV360, Lagos. 
The week-long activity is marking the 2024 International Day of Youth in Lagos State ended on Tuesday with Governor Babajide Sonwolu reiterating his administration's support and commitment to harness the potential of young people in the state for sustainable development and a prosperous future. The governor said the theme of the International Day of the Youth, from clicks to progress, youth digital pathways for sustainable development, encapsulated his belief to leverage digital technology as a bridge that would connect young people in the state to a sustainable and prosperous future. He says the state's investment in youth leadership programs is a strategic move that aligns with his administration's vision to expand sustainable development, economic growth, social stability, as well as harnessing demographic dividend. Youth entrepreneurship and empowerment. We recognize the entrepreneurial spirit of our youth and have launched programs such as the Lagos Innovate Initiative under the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, which provides funding, training, and support for young entrepreneurs. We are also enhancing access to microcredit facilities by ensuring that our young people can turn their ideas into viable business ideas. Engagement and participation to ensure that the voices of our youth are heard, we have established various platforms such as the National Youth Council of Nigeria, the Lagos State Chapter, and of course, the Lagos State Youth Parliament that allows for meaningful dialogue between the young people and the policy makers. On Wednesday, Mr. Governor, through Thursday, 21st uh, to the 23rd, we had a business development entrepreneurial clinic, dubbed Amplifier Business Clinic. This program, the third in the series, empowered 79 young entrepreneurs that are all seated behind you with essential skills to enhance their business and their financial strength, Mr. Governor. These entrepreneurs engaged with various industry experts, connected with mentors, and took part in a business pitch competition. Out of the 25 participants, Mr. Governor, that qualified to the participants in the pitch, eight top finalists were selected through a transparent and merit-based process. And they will receive their cash grants today to scale their business, Mr. Governor. To address the vital need for youth empowerment and leadership development in Lagos, the State Youth Parliament, in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, has organized the Koshofe Mentorship and Leadership Bootcamp Stakeholders uh, aimed at actively engaging youths while addressing issues of national concern. The boot camp is also expected to empower young people to foster peer-to-peer -peer learning and community building. Organizers of the event say such mentorship and leadership skills are necessary to unlock the full potential of young people, which will ultimately contribute to the development of Lagos State and Nigeria at large. It's actually an initiative I thought of organizing because we have realized the problem of self-awareness, emotional intelligence, and leadership skills among young adults who are just um, leaving the secondary schools, um, going into this um, um, general world. So we came about uh, uh, planning and inviting speakers to come and speak to these students about how life is and how they can also um, uh, succeed when they are out of their secondary school um, um, sessions. We can have uh, enough of events like this. Please, we even need to do more. We need events where we can bring in the youth, gather them in their numbers, and we begin to teach and inform them. Because one of the problems the youth are having today is misinformation. So we need avenues to gather them, and we bring in seasoned speakers or people who, knowledgeable people who have knowledge of the situation of the country, the problem, and they have solutions to this problem so that they can come and inform these children and prepare them for the tomorrow. So this program is just one of many we need to keep up organizing. This event today is very important because um, it aligns with the fact that 
the governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Olushola Sanwulu, have always put first the youth, which means that they are the future. And for us to prepare for the future adequately, we definitely have to start preparing from now. And that is what you are seeing here today. We'll take a break now, but coming up in the news, Sweden charges Quran burners with hate crime. Stay with us for details. We'll be back shortly. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. 16 persons have died in an accident on the Ondo Ore Expressway involving a Toyota Hayes bus and a truck on Tuesday. According to the Ondo Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, three persons were also injured in the accident. In a similar development, a head-on collision involving two BRT buses occurred within the designated lane on the lagos Abeokuta Expressway at the Yanopaja axis, resulting in several wounded passengers on Tuesday. According to head of the Public Affairs Unit, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Lasema Nosa Okumbo, no lives were lost as a result of the accident. We also informed you that Minister of Education Tahir Maman has convened a meeting with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, on Wednesday, days after university lecturers threatened to down tools over the alleged failure of the federal government to meet its demands. Last week, the university lecturers threatened to embark on a nationwide strike over what they described as the unwillingness of the federal government to honor the 2009 re renegotiated agreement. The demands of ASU include welfare matters, funding for universities, and the need to stop the proliferation of universities across the country. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV, or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria, or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery, and Apple Store, on Facebook, or at TV360 Online. Get ready for the 8th edition of the Voice of Women Conference and Awards, VAL 2024. Theme, Achieving Women's Inclusion for a Sustainable Nigeria. Mark your calendar for Thursday, 3rd of October 2024, 9 a.m. at the NAV Conference Center, Abuja, Nigeria. And be part of a national dialogue bringing together grassroots and urban women in the quest for inclusion and sustainability in Nigeria. VAL 2024 is more than 
isn't just a conference, it's a powerful movement. VAL 2024, an initiative of Voice of Women Empowerment Foundation and Women Radio, is where diverse women groups converge to champion inclusive policies and drive national development. For more stories in the world of business, let's join Okoyemi Owoshini, who's on standby with the latest. Over to you, Okoyemi. Thank you, Simisala. Welcome to Business News. Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwulu has reiterated his administration's commitment to creating an enabling environment for both local and foreign businesses to thrive in the state, while assuring the state government would continue to implement policies and initiatives aimed at attracting and retaining investment. Someone who gave this assurance during the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry International Business Conference Expo 2024. Speaking on his administration's commitment to making Lagos a 21st century economy, the governor disclosed that the state was focusing on infrastructural development in public transportation, the digital ecosystem, agriculture and more to boost foreign investors' confidence and create employment opportunities for the teeming youth in Lagos State. As part of our demonstration, that we just don't want to say that we're a small state or a city state. We're building the largest logistic food security hub in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. We see and we realize that we need to feed the over 20 million population that we have. And we say to ourselves that one of the ways to secure the tomorrow is to make sure that food security, which is one of the major security challenges that we have in the world, Lagos can build a logistics hub that can keep almost 90 to 120 days of supply on both dry and food stock. And so we're looking for opportunity and collaboration, you know, as we complete that investment and ensuring that, you know, we can keep Lagos safe, we can provide for the needs of Lagosians, and we can use agriculture as a strong, you know, enabler on that. Our commitment to the marine and blue economy is demonstrated through ongoing port rehabilitation, a modernization project. We are about concluding the procurement process for rehabilitation of a Papa and Tinkham Island port. In addition to this, we are developing more deep sea ports such as the Lekki, Badagri, Ondo, Burutu, and Snake Island seaport. These initiatives are designed to improve Nigerian competitive edge as a maritime hub in the region. To further enhance port efficiency, we are introducing the single window system and the port community system, which facilitates seamless business transactions and trade documentation, reducing delays and fostering transparency. We'll take a break now and be back with Stock Market Report. Welcome back. Nigeria's equities market on Wednesday recorded its first negative close this week as investors continue to reduce their exposure to risk and focus on protecting their capital. The market decreased by 0.32%. Stocks like MTN Nigeria, Tantalizer and Jay's Bank were mostly offered for sale on the Lagos base, causing their share prices to decrease more than others. Now, leading the, la leading the laggard, Nymite International Pharma took a dramatic plunge, crushing down by 9.09% to close at soon Naira zero cobble, but tantalizer was also not far behind as it closed at zero naira seventy four cobble. Now, at the end of today's trading spree on the Nigerian stock exchange, investors were on the move with four hundred and forty six million volumes of share, which swapped hands through ten thousand one hundred and forty eight deals. The market, total market value for today was four point five three one billion naira. It was a very high energy day, filled with numbers and action. Well, on the global scene, the U.S. Dow Jones and U.K.'s FTSE took a bearish turn. While 
All Japan Nikkei enjoyed positive trading on Wednesday to close at 0.22%. Now turning to the foreign exchange market, the Naira experienced a dip against the US dollar to get at 1,620 Naira on the black market. The British pound was valued at 2,125 Naira and the euro traded at 1,805 Naira as well on the black market. That wraps up our business and stock market report. Back to you, Simisola, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much, on the foreign scene, more than 300 people with links to one of West Africa's most feared criminal networks, the Black Axe, and other affiliated groups have been arrested by the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol. The suspects were arrested in 21 countries between April and July 2024 during Operation Jackal 3. According to a statement by Interpol, the operation has led to hundreds of arrests, the seizure of assets worth $3 million, and the dismantling of multiple criminal networks around the world. Over 400 additional suspects were also identified, including the blocking of more than 720 bank accounts. Still on the foreign scene, Swedish prosecutors have charged two men with inciting ethnic hatred over several protests involving the burning of Qurans in 2023, which sparked widespread outrage in Muslim countries. In a statement by a senior prosecutor, both men are prosecuted for having made statements and treated the Quran in a manner intended to express uh, con contempt for Muslims because of their faith. The prosecutor added that the men's statements and actions fall under the provisions on agitation against an ethnic or national group, hence the importance that the matter is tried in court. And on sports, diverse reactions are still trailing the recent appointment of German tactician Bruno Labadia as the new head coach of the national team, the Super Eagles, by the Nigeria Football Federation, ending weeks of speculation and uncertainty after the departure of former coach Finiti George. Labadia now faces the daunting task of preparing the Super Eagles for their next games, with less than three weeks to prepare uh, the team for the crucial Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers and the World Cup. Sports analysts and football Football fans of the country say the Super Eagles have been placed in a tight spot with a manager who lacks local experience. They are however optimistic that with the right support, the team will win their next game against Benin and Rwanda. Um, we can um, only hope and um, pray that um, the two parties um, coming together will give us a favourable time as, um, as a new um, national coach is um, according to statistics is the 37th um, national coach and a few of um, those are come from Germany let's don't forget um, Ganacho was also a German and other coaches have done them so well but in terms of knowledge and profile there's nothing if you're going to hold on to um, the profile about him if you're going to hold on to what he has done it's obviously that um, there's nothing to write him about and it's very very um, difficult for um, you to bring um, a coach who has not national team experience or who doesn't have a um, trophy in his um, in his cabinet, it's very, very dif difficult. But let's don't forget that um, he's coming to coach um, one of the best team in the world, the Super Eagles um, of Nigeria. And um, we hope that um, they can, we can be a good match. It's a tough one because expectations are high. And fine, he has the experience of European club side playing, but this is an African team. And our style of play is different. More so that we have international players that come from abroad, but when they come back home, they need to change their pattern of play to suit the African thing. Now you say we are going for AFCON, right? It's going to be a big challenge for him. It's a big challenge. To me, I don't think we need him now. For that qualification for AFCON, he will probably not be able to perform. And that's it on news now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next time.